Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello, everybody. And this, eves- this evening's very special guest is not here to talk about himself. He's here to talk about his blog. And he's not here on Skype. Oh, no, he's not on Skype. We're not having torrential weather. It's not 112 degrees outside. It is not snowing. Nothing is melting. So we are joined live in studio by Rick Tarosi. Hello. Hello, Rick. Hello. How are you? Great. Happy Aww, birthday. Oh, thank you. Very nice. All right. So it's not your birthday. No, not my birthday. No. It's not your birthday, so would you like to tell us why we just gave you roses? Uh, well, it's the the blog's birthday. That, that so silicon florist um, it, about seven hundred and thirty days ago, I registered the URL for silicon florist. Came up with the idea and thought um, that people should be covering, they should, they should be understanding what's going on in the Portland tech scene. Mm-hmm. So I I started a blog, and that's about that. And there's the the blog right there. Yeah, if it'll load. Silicon floors. It's loaded. All we right. weren't going to mention that. Great. Shh, we're going to say nice things about your blog and encourage it to keep running. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so in the two years, it, what what did you start out thinking it was going to be? Because it's uh, a side project for you. Right. It's very much a side project. I just do it in my free time. Um, I originally thought the blog would be something for the Portland community to kind of keep an eye on what people were doing, what projects were going on, um, to some extent, what, what events were Mm -hmm. happening, that kind of thing. And, um, what it kind of, it kind of happened is people from outside Portland started reading it and, and looking in to see what was going on in Portland and in the startup scene, which was cool, but actually put quite a bit of pressure on me to continue to find yeah. things that were interesting for folks outside the community. And the, uh, quite frankly, I was surprised at, um, as the as the startup tech community started to gel, how many events I was covering on a regular basis. I expected to just cover products or or um, projects that people were working on, yeah. but it wound up being a lot of events throughout There's the There's a time. whole heck of events there in are Portland in the tech events. scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And big ones. I mean, yeah. like user groups, you know, Ignite, all the camp. Campity camp <laughs> camp, 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 yeah, camp, yeah. camp, camp. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, there's a lot. Uh, it tends to kind of stray into more um, more general coverage of what's going on, mm-hmm. not just so kind of product review kind of stuff, which actually makes it um, more difficult on the readers because they have to deal with more of my content on a regular basis than than. I would prefer. Like, I was thinking it would just be, I'd read some RSS feeds, I'd type up some products, and we'd be done with yeah. it, you know, once a week kind of thing. But um, it, there's quite a bit going on. In the Portland tech scene, even though this is just your side project, this is what you're known for, though. This is why people know you in Portland. Yeah. Yeah. So I've worked in the Portland startup tech scene for about 15 years now, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, probably worked for five, six startups here in town. And uh, all my professional endeavors that I've been paid to do, n- no one really knows <laughs> about. But the, but the blog, people know about the stuff I do on the side. So, that, right. but that's cool. That's great. So, in honor of, and that's kind of the way it works in Portland, actually. <laughs> exactly. It really is. Yes. Um, in honor of the, the second anniversary, second birthday of Silicon Forest, yes. I'm going to give them the favorite things that you've covered, the favorite topics, okay. not the individual posts, right? Um, but your favorite topics that you've covered, and that would be Ignite Portland. Yeah. So Ignite was really interesting um, because I, I've kind of been there for the whole thing, mm-hmm. and I, I was following um, Josh Bancroft was at Gnome Dex in 2007, and I was following his his tweets on that, and they must have had some Ignite presentations there. And he said, 
you know, I saw this tweet. He's like, well, we, we got to do this in Portland. And I, I, anybody who knows me knows that I also have this URL purchasing addiction. <laughs> so I immediately went out and bought the URLs for Rick's that. Rick's a URL junkie. Yeah, I am. I have a problem with that. But that's okay. I mean, I'm sure it's an investment for mm-hmm. the future. Um and and I you know I kind of sent a message back to him I'm like if you're serious about this we've got the URL and and let's let's do something about it so um, they kind of you know Josh and Raven and Don and Todd and those guys uh, pre Legion of Tech mm-hmm. kind of figured that whole thing out started doing the Ignite Portland stuff and and I always felt kind of like <clears throat> I was the you know I. I was I was in at the beginning. I wasn't part of that group, but I, I kind of felt connected to it in terms of helping promote it yeah. and trying to get the word out there and that kind of thing. And then just to see it kind of grow and get attention from traditional media like the Oregonian and that kind of thing. It was just it was it's been really interesting to watch that kind of as it's matured and yeah. see the Legion of Tech grow out of that and and that kind of stuff. So because it's really what the Legion of Tech sprung from, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was that thing that they said there's something going on here that we could use, you know, somebody to help organize these kind of events. So, okay. Um, next is being part of helping the community rally to save cube space. Yeah. So sadly didn't end as <clears throat> didn't end <laughs> on, a, on a happy note. Um, but I thought it was really, uh, you know, cube space, as anyone knows, who's been in the Portland tech scene, you know, cube space was a huge part of, the events, user groups, um, you know, without CubeSpace, there wouldn't have been things like Open Source Bridge or, you know, probably Bar Camp. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so there a lot of big events that occurred there. And so when they, we heard they were in trouble and it happened the, <clears throat> you know, kind of the, the Friday of Web Visions, mm-hmm. right before a three-day weekend. And um, it was, it, it was one of those where, Everybody kind of uh, simultaneously, like five people came up to me and like, "Have you heard about what's going on with Cube Space?" And and um, there were already other people covering it, but just helping kind of round up that coverage and and make sure that everybody knew what was going on um, felt like I was helping the situation. And you know, I really um, I can't say enough about David and Neva and, and what they've done for the community. Um, but it was just, it was interesting to be part of that dynamic. And there are certain times like that where the community really shows what it's made of and really, um, you know, for as, for as like disjointed as it seems at times, there are times where it really rallies. And that was a really impressive uh, showing that received, na- you know, at least Northwest attention across the board, if not national attention from from some media as well. So it was good to be involved in that and part of that. So another topic that didn't necessarily end on a high note yeah. was that you covered um, the lifespan of the Duke in the city of Portland. Yeah, yeah, much you know, again, you know, we I think we learned a lot from that whole thing, but it was one of those things where. I'm lucky enough that the blog has a public record of that whole story in Portland. I mean, much like Ignite, it's from the time that, uh, you know, I can, I can still remember sitting down with Scott Kavitan and, and Luke when, when Scott was like, Oh, I kind of found this company, Vadoop, I might go work for, and I, you know, I want you to talk to these guys and see what they're doing. And, and then all of a sudden it was like, Scott's like, well, maybe we'll open a Portland office, and then suddenly it was we're moving the whole company up here, and 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 then they did the the Oregon Trail mm-hmm. thing, and it was it, it was just an interesting. Um, it was one of those times you felt really proud of Portland and the the attraction that it has, to, the and, and, the, and and then the way that the community really embraced. The dupe coming to the, you know, Beer and Blog did a great job of hosting them. Um, you know, the whole community turned out when their caravan showed up on the Oregon Trail stuff. And, and you know, it was just, a, again, I think really representative of what the community here is capable of. Again, not 
didn't end the best way, but but it showed our strengths. Yeah, and and being able to see the whole story, mm-hmm. I think, I think is really interesting, and and it was a privilege to be part of that, regardless of how it how it ended. Um. So the next one is um beginning to cover the iPhone in mobile space. Yeah. So what we're what we're seeing now is um, when I originally started. Silicon floors. There were there may be a couple mobile companies in mm-hmm. town that were really focused on that, and um, <clears throat> you know Jason Grigsby was was thinking about that kind of stuff. But Cloud Four hadn't really formed yet. Um, there was you know Free Range was doing work. I think um, you know uh, Spotlight Mobile might have been doing some work. There were some companies that were working on more infrastructure kind of stuff, but there wasn't really a mobile scene. And then you know. Quite honestly, Raven kind of decided, I'm going to do iPhone stuff, mm-hmm. and I'm going to, you know, he's a, he was an open source analyst, and uh, had a had you know kind of saw what was happening with the iPhone, and had a great vision for where it was going, mm-hmm. and and started iPhone Dev Camp before you could even develop applications for the iPhone, and and Portland really started to to show some promise there, and I, I was actually talking. Um, there have been some reporters working on the story of mobile in Portland recently, and, and everybody asks, you know, why? What's the, you know, like I will, anybody who's read my blog will know that I often go, oh, Portland's the de facto hub of mobile development, <laughs> or Portland's the de facto hub of open ID, or whatever, because that's, um, because nobody else is making that claim, so we might as well. But the, um, we might as well, like, get it. Yeah, just if a nobody's going to say on it, it now, yeah, it's I'm, us. It's us. I'm in marketing. It doesn't need to be backed up by facts. The mobile, mobile bacon, whatever. whatever. It's all good. Capital. We have it. <laughs> We're it's all ours. over that. <laughs> and um, it, you saw people start to to move towards mobile development, especially for the iPhone. Mm-hmm. And I think there were certain factors about the Portland culture and Portland community that really made people kind of glom on to that. It's very, you know, it can be very individual or like one or two people kind of small project. You can still build an app for the iPhone. Um, it really, uh, so you still have control over it. Um, it's, you know, talking to engineers and developers, it's not especially challenging to develop the app, but the, you know they get to express their creativity and how they deal with the hardware. So, am I going to access the GPS? Am I going to use the camera? Am I going to you know what am I going to do with the multi-touch? Um, you know, Raven, Raven and James with Small Society, they built an app where like you blow into the microphone and it freezes over the screen, so you can wipe it out. So like you know, fun stuff. What are you going to do with that kind of user interaction stuff that I think really stimulates um, developers' creativity here in town? And then also the fact that, uh, like everything else, Portland is very collegial in these mm. kind of pursuits, yeah. and I don't see a lot of iPhone developers like competing with one like in portland at least going oh i'm totally gonna put those guys you know i'm, I'm totally gonna, take beat, you down. I'm gonna beat those guys i'm gonna put that company under yeah. it's more like you know the mobile portland thing that griggs has started and all that kind of thing. i mean people are sharing information they're um you know uh ellie uh i'm gonna i totally spacing his line at freeman i think he he totally gave like all this business intelligence he had about what it took to submit his app to the iPhone store, how they went through pricing stuff, you know, what, like, it, it, just being very open with the whole process of what it takes to, to deal with iPhone apps. And I think that's really helped the community. And then when you look at things that, like, um, you know, the, the Obama app for the iPhone, which, which Raven and Griggs mm-hmm. and yeah. a couple other people here in Portland were involved with. You look at the stuff that, that small society is doing with big-name clients. You look at things like... Um, uh, subatomic studios with field runners and which was uh, one of the one of the number one games in the country for, yeah in the t- in time magazine's top 10 top 10 video games period yeah. for 2008 so that's that pretty me- fantastic yeah so that i mean nintendo playstation any of those 
this iPhone game was one of their top ten games that they named, and so so we have these people and, and uh, Spotlight Mobile, which does like an amazing app for Style dot com, um, which is like a fashion magazine, fashion site. Which you're very fond of. Clearly. I'm very you get to see runway models, like like it's you can do the <laughs> you can do the whole runway scene. You can like look up information on the designers. It's it's a very cool app, yeah. and they're doing uh, they're also doing Barnes and Noble. They're doing their online storefront, and then you look at the stuff that like Raven's doing for Zipcar. I mean Raven, Small Society. Yeah. Um, and because I don't want to leave out James or the other folks there because they do schwa, they do amazing work. Um, but you know, Zipcar, Whole Foods, like these big names are Does doing Powell's that. have a mobile app? I don't think Powell's Because Powell's does. should totally have a mobile Powell's app. Should, you know, TriMet has Powell's some cool get on mobile apps but for not official TriMet apps. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. there's things designed they for TriMet. They open the pipe but... so that people can use it, yeah. and they have an app store yeah. for for TriMet based apps. Um, so you see, like, well, and, and again, <clears throat> Kavit and MT, um, you know, and those guys, and and Adam and and the guys at Urban Airship. Yeah. Like that will never be like this. Wow, consumers really think what Urban Airship is doing is cool, but iPhone app developers know what they're doing is cool, and they're providing like this critical component to to using the new functionality in the phone. So I think there's a lot of really cool stuff going on here that I never saw that coming. Mm-hmm. Like open source stuff, okay, I knew that was gonna be big, and we could see that the you know the kind of like I said, like you started to see how the camps and events really took hold. But mobile just kind of came out of nowhere for Portland, and and really we really kind of took hold of it and could do something pretty big with it if we if we kind of put our mind. I think to a it. lot of the mobile work that's being done in Portland is the exception to the feeling that people in Portland do things half-assed because they have so many side projects. Yeah, I think the people that are putting their um, their effort into the mobile developing are really forming. Uh, companies and uh, work groups and really just tackling that and sinking their teeth in and doing a great job. Yeah, and I think it's still the wild, wild west. I yeah. mean, everybody talks about, you know, there's 60,000 apps in the in the iPhone store, but compared to how many web apps there are out there, I mean, that's, that's a relatively small number of applications. There's still a lot of opportunity to, to really do something special there. And I also think people can do... Um, the barrier barrier to entry is is relatively low in terms of the development need, mm-hmm. and you also gain this benefit of even though it's crowded, Apple is basically handling your promotion. Yeah. You know, you have a distribution channel. You don't have to work with marketing geeks like me. You've got <laughs> like somebody. But we doing, love marketing yeah, geeks like uh-huh. you. So, but we've got you know you've got somebody helping you with that aspect of it. So it's easier, I think, for them to be independent and doing what they want with their application without trying to find a lot of other people to help them with it. All right, let's move on to the next bullet point, which is one that's very near and dear to my heart. Mm-hmm. Justin and Christine, Beer and Blog. Beer and Blog, yeah. And that's another one where it's, um, you know, again, sheer dumb luck happened to be in the right place at the right time for just kind of, you know, Justin coming up with the 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 concept and and seeing it kind of grow into this it, what has become the de facto happy hour for tech in Portland every Friday. Um, you know, what started out as I think I missed I missed the first one or two, mm-hmm. and the the first one I went to probably had like six people. Um, I can still remember we were at the Lucky Lab and the wireless router was freaking out, so we wound up. Walking over to Hub, uh, no, not Hub, uh, Roots, which is ju- which the brewery? is yeah, which is just a couple blocks down, and it was pouring rain, and um, but we wound up there, you know, some people found us, probably wound up being about ten people total, and we were we were discussing WordPress plugins, like must-have WordPress plugins, so we were all kind of hacking on our blogs, actually doing blogging at Beer and Blog, which is. Basically unheard of, unheard of now, yes. Um, but you know, and it started from there, and it was one of the, that was actually one of the first times that um, I f- felt comfortable interacting with the community. Like that was a nice entree into. It's a really easy opening. Yeah, and especially when you combine that with Twitter, where 
it, it, Twitter does all the small talk ice breaking stuff and gets all that out of the way. And then when you have events like Beer and Blog where you can, you know, oh, I saw blah, you, know, you said blah, 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 or, yeah. you know, how are you doing with this or whatever, um, it, Beer and Blog is just a really nice way to get involved with the community. Um, again, really low barrier to entry, really welcoming to, I mean, I've been there times where there are, like just completely random people having nothing to do with the tech scene who've heard about it and you know are interested in starting a blog and they're just as welcome there as as anyone else and it's a really good way to to kind of get exposed kind of like ignite like i think yeah. ignite is the same way it's a, ignite's a really easy entry point because it's not even techy no. anymore you don't have to have anything to do with tech to present or to it right it's more like an art yeah. Kind of thing and and um, beer and blog has kind of evolved into like the happy hour. Although they're kind of thing. doing things now, and I think it's directly because it's turned into the happy hour that they're doing the um, in bloglessness and in joblessness right. and the, the side events that they're doing. Yeah. To try to draw people back into the tech side of things, and I think that's very cool. Yeah, I do too, and it's and it's really kind of been that. Um, we've got this critical mass of talent mm-hmm. who are very collegial and and um, you know very are seeing we see each other all the time and I think it's a really good use of figuring out how to take that talent and do something positive with it. Um, not that standing around drinking beer and chatting isn't positive, but that, that there's you know that we can help some other folks or bring other folks in on that kind of stuff, and and that's another one where I felt like super lucky to just be part of kind of like observing yeah. the stuff happening and being able to kind of just document what's been going on over time. All right, well, let's tackle these last two. Uh, uh-huh. All the Twitter posts. Yeah, how the many Twitter billions posts. of tweets. I can't even count how many Twitter posts I've written, but they're always, like, super popular. Like, yeah. and, um, you know, it, it, I think it, I think Twitter's always held, like, a really special place in this kind of community <laughs> and, like, helping us kind of draw people out of the, you know, out of their houses and, and to more public places or keeping in contact with I'm people. I'm always amazed with how something that is so deeply ingrained in the computer mm-hmm. has completely drawn me out of my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In case people don't know, I'm really... I like my house. I like to be in my house. I like to stay in my house. <laughs> I would not leave my house if I could help it. But I've left my house so much more because of Twitter. Yeah. Because... There's something to, oh my gosh, i got to go see what this is doing. I've got to hook up with this person. I've got to find out what's going on. Right. And I'm the same way, less about my house and just that, like, I am, like, like, super shy. Like, I don't, like. That's why I stay in my house. Yeah, I don't, like, I, it's just, I'm not good at Rick that and I don't like people. Yeah, I don't That's like what it is. It's not that we're shy. It's that we don't like people. <laughs> and, and that it helps kind of, you know, diffuse some of that. Yeah. Um, you know, basically most of the folks you meet, even if you've never met them before, it's like, oh, I follow you on Twitter or, you know, I saw somebody talking about what you're doing or, you know, and it's really done a, done a, a great job of helping, um, helping bring that community together. And then I think things like, you know, people always like, people love the lists. So anytime yeah. you do a list of like... Here are the top Twitter users, or you know, here are the top whatever. I, like right, I don't know if they so much love the lists as they love to hate the lists. Yes, they like to complain about the right. lists. Why am I not yeah. on the list? Why is this person on the list? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't really cuss like a Scottish comedian, do I? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Apparently I do. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> But, and then the other part of Twitter is, you know, once they acquired Real Dornfest company, Hi, Real. it's like now Twitter is has a port. You know, the it's same way Portland. we joke about the same way we joke about Read Write Web being yeah. a Portland blog. It is a Portland blog. Totally, I don't more care of their writers, more of their writers live here than anywhere else. But um, but Twitter's much the same way. Yeah. It's you know we already liked it, and now that we have a Portland tie, Portland and, likes to. Uh, accumulate things we, we like to say it's ours exactly we yeah. like to adopt stuff yeah, like that. yeah very much so yeah all right the last one um was with the speaking of acquisitions yeah you acquired jake yes you brought him into the fold yeah. and you are now the portland coverage for lunch 2.0 for lunch 2.0 and that's really nice um like it was really funny you know jake uh, jake 
Kuramoto had started, the, brought kind of this lunch 2.0 idea to Portland. And um, he was using the lunch 2.0 site to promote it. And then I was basically rewriting what, yeah, or, what yeah, he had yeah, already or, said. Like stealing what he'd already yeah. written and, and reposting it. And um, he eventually just went, you know, this is silly. Why don't we just, why don't we just start putting it on Silicon Florist? And, and it was like just one of those things that made sense and, uh, and really um, like just really brought Silicon Florist to a different level. A, because it was somebody else writing besides me. Mm -hmm. Um, It was, it was really the first kind of Silicon Florist, associated event i mean it's like that and then when we did things like the birthday party last year like that's still i'm like i'm still like shocked at that event that we did that was a humongous turnout i mean it was just that was i know you couldn't it was at cube space which is a large space yeah and there was literally standing room only elbowing people on accident just to walk through the crowd right it was crazy yeah it was super crowded and that was it was just one of those where it was like you know and it was all kinds of different people it was great that it was a lot of the tech community folks but you even saw some people who were maybe on the fringe um or who people people who were just you know that it's still, I'm always shocked by people who are readers. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Oh, I read your blog," and I'm like, "Why?" But, the, <laughs> but, um, and thank you. But it's still uh, humble. But the, um, but the, it drew like such an interesting crowd together, and and to kind of continue that, um, you know, Jake Jake just does a really good job with that, and he's even more like you know, humble about the whole thing than I am. But I think, I think the lunch 2.0 thing has really served, um, a purpose, especially for people who can't make it to evening events. Like it's the only daytime event that really runs for the community. And because of that, it tends to draw almost a completely different crowd than any of the other events. So, all right. So we've highlighted your favorite topics and I think we've actually spent a good portion of the podcast doing so. So I want to jump in really quick to what is in the future for the Silicon Florist. Uh, well, I, went, I actually went back today and read my like first anniversary, first birthday post. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I haven't done that yet. Oh, I haven't done that. Like There are all these things where I'm like, oh, yeah, in the second year, I'll totally get to doing this stuff. Um, and, and not too long ago, I had put up a post. Uh, I you know The headline was Silicon Florist Sucks, which was just... Like it, Primus? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which was designed to elicit some response about like what is wrong, what could I do better? I, oh, I remember what, that post. Yeah, like what, like I'm, you know, and not that I'm out of ideas. Like I always have ideas, but I wanted to know what the community thought was missing from the whole thing, and it constantly comes back to. I, I always kind of equate it to. Um, like Olympics coverage, you know how you watch all the sports and then they want to do the up close and personal with Peekaboo Street the or whomever. Tearful. Yes, exactly. Need chapstick. Here's where they came. They came from this childhood, and this is why. Yeah, yeah. That's what people want, and that's what we need to do more of. And I've got, I've got Portland on fire. Kind that's of, what I was going to yeah, ask because you, you know, haven't done anything with that. I yet. acquired that from Raven because he didn't have time to do anything with it, and. Um, and I would still I haven't seen any posts, Rick. Yeah, no. I would still like to do Thanks. something there because people want those. I think last time you were in the show was when you had just taken it over. Yeah, and it was definitely going to be up and I running. We're talking about it. In a matter, it was going to be ready soon. Yeah, Very totally, soon. totally soon. <laughs> Tomorrow it'll be up. But the but the other thing, <laughs> unfortunately, the the other thing that we've been talking about is. Um, and this goes for Silicon Florist, too, as well as Portland on Fire, is that um, not everybody wants to read through the diatribes that I compose on a regular basis. I mean, that's really easy for me to, mm-hmm. like, bang out content, but that's not the way that everybody wants to consume that content. So trying to figure out some different ways to make the content more accessible or make these kind of personal stories more accessible. So... Um, you know, Stephen Walling had a had a great idea to start doing, and he and I are kind of talking about this idea of just doing quick interviews with people. You know, who are you? What are you doing? 
why are you there? But do video interviews. So instead of people having to fill out like a long Portland on Fire profile, they could just do a quick three to five minute video blurb, either with Stephen or me, or like just in front of their computer, record it however they want. Start doing some of that stuff and get get um, start to produce more content without it being relying on me to to just kind of crank out content yeah. because. Um, Because you're not a content machine? I am a content machine, but it's the the problem is that there's just too much going on. There's just like, there's, you know, and the the other part is like, I need to figure out how to spend more time on the blog. Like, I think it's providing enough value right Mm -hmm. now, but I think we could be doing so much more with it that... You know, it's it's really starting to kind of move from being a side project to it where it could be something more. But we'd have yeah. to figure out how all that sorts would work. of things to. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're not alone in that boat. Nah. it's a very full boat. I can imagine we're going to need a we bigger need some boat. More oars. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Why don't you tell us about pie? Pie. Not the pie off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's so um, much pie in Portland. Portland could be the pie capital I know. too. Yeah, so Pi is a uh, Portland incubator experiment, and it truly is an experiment. It's something that um, I don't have to go into long details about the backstory, but um, basically, I wound up sitting down talking to Rennie Gleason over at Wyden and Kennedy. Um, and he, and for those of you, people who don't know, Wyden & Kennedy is an advertising agency in town. They do work for places like Nike, um, Old Spice, like big, big brand kind of advertising things. Um, you know, they did, they did those puppets and stuff on the NBA playoffs. And <laughs> um, but uh, he had this concept that, that, Wyden and Kennedy need to be not only more in touch with the Portland community, but more in, ch- and more in touch with tech in mm-hmm. general, and and that their clients were pushing them a lot to to um, be more thoughtful in terms of tech, and and that he had this concept of he wanted some kind of skunkworks think tank thing that. Um, that Wyden and Kennedy could use as a sounding board or kind of an idea generator for for their folks. And he, you know, had talked about this idea for quite some time. And the um, pretty much at the same time, Scott Kavitan, Jason Glasby, Justin Kistner, you know, we'd, al- we'd always kind of been talking about this. Wouldn't it be great if there was some kind of like either, you know, geek clubhouse thing or just even some space where we could get a bunch of people together to work on projects um, and and really not to be tried about it, but like kind of a real world situation. Like what happens if we throw all these people in the same room and, and just kind of see what, what happens? And those two conversations were happening in parallel, and I was just kind of like, Rennie, you know, we we need to talk to Scott and figure out if we can do something here. And just really quickly, um, the whole thing kind of came together, and uh, we're kind of rushing it. Like, there's still a lot of questions, still a lot of stuff we don't even know what's going on, but, you know, there's some really... Um, smart people who I'm lucky to sit next to at the place and they're doing some really cool work Um, Urban Airship is in there, Bacon is in there uh, Marshall Kirkpatrick's in there from time to time, the folks from Placial, Mm -hmm. uh, Diane and Jason Who they? uh, Jason's pretty much doing the Placial stuff Diane's on to another company called Waze and uh, and uh, Rail may be in there from time to time. Mm-hmm. So, like, a, just a good kind of group of people. Andy, Andy Bio, who uh, created Upcoming, is in there from time to time. And it's just, it's just a right now think tank kind of idea. And we're hoping to we're hoping to help people kind of spin up ideas. My my ideal is that if these same people are sitting there six months from now, we've failed. Like I want yeah. to see people creating ideas and, and making them viable and getting out of there and putting new people in there and, uh, and really figuring that stuff out. So 
Oh, I'm sorry, sure, I don't really know what it is. Yet. <laughs> but it's fun. It's fun. It could be fun. All right, we'll, well we're running out of time. Okay. But definitely not out of conversation. Yes, so we'll have a lot I more to talk like, about in like after hours. Chat. But before we go, Kelly, can you bring over the. Thank you. Um, <laughs> because we here at Strange of Life really, really don't like you. Yeah, thank um, you. Happy second birthday, Silicon Florist. Thank you. Blow out your candle. Make a wish. All right. And we'll have cake later. Cool. We're going we're gonna to go ahead. Um, we're running out of time, so we're going to roll this, but stay tuned uh, after the credits because we're going to have um, a special little announcement from Lockets to you. And uh, we'll see you guys back here for After Hours in just a little bit. And apparently Dr. Normal has not learned the code for Stretch It Out. Oh, bye-bye, everybody. (laughs) Next week we'll be with Aaron Hockley. Thanks for joining us.